The Turkish people have been some of the most, the strongest supporters of the Palestinian people. We're talking about 34,000 people dead officially. We've also now seen the Israeli military talk about invading Rafah. What started as a peaceful encampment in Colombia has now ballooned into a mass protest movement. In fact, the violence is being committed against the peaceful protesters. So what we've witnessed in Gaza over the past seven months is the most dramatic escalation in violence in Israel-Palestine history since the Zionist movement's origins in the late 19th century. We're talking about 34,000 people dead. Officially, the actual count is probably something more like 40 to 50,000. According to some estimates, 10 to 15,000 people um, missing, trapped under the rubble, buried in mass graves. We just saw this past week, hundreds and hundreds of bodies turn up in mass graves in Khan Yunis, a city that has been completely leveled to the ground by the Israeli military, 80% of buildings destroyed in the town, making it completely unlivable. And that has been the goal of Israel's operation in Gaza. It's to make the place unlivable, which is, of course, one of the acts of genocide, according to the Genocide Conventions of 1948. It's rendering conditions of life impossible. That is exactly what we've seen in Gaza over the past seven months. We've also now seen the Israeli military talk about invading Rafah for the past couple of months, an invasion that that we know would lead to catastrophic humanitarian consequences. Israel has already destroyed every single university in the Gaza Strip. Israel has destroyed the entirety of the health sector in the Gaza Strip. Israel has leveled somewhere between 50 and 80% of all buildings in the Gaza Strip. Israel has prevented humanitarian aid from reaching the north. Something like 14 humanitarian convoys have been documented to have been destroyed by the Israeli military. The goal being to thin out the population of the north using Israeli military terminology. We've had at least 28 uh, documented cases of children and, and others dying from starvation. Human Rights Watch has published a report documenting Israel's use of starvation as a weapon of war. What we are witnessing right now is the most serious humanitarian catastrophe on planet Earth. There are no people facing this level of starvation. So we're talking about the complete decimation of an entire society, the decimation of dozens and dozens of mosques, the desecration of the Gaza Municipal Archives, Salim Raiz's antique shop, which housed thousands of documents of Palestinian history. So cultural uh, destruction, destruction of the healthcare sector, starving people to death, destruction of the entirety of the housing stock in Gaza, making almost everyone homeless. We're talking about more than 2 million people displaced, living in open air shelters, living in tents, and just an absolute humanitarian catastrophe. And that, that is what we've witnessed in Gaza over the past seven months. What started as a peaceful encampment in Colombia has now ballooned into a mass protest movement, not just in the United States, but also in France and Australia and the UK. Columbia University, whose president, by the way, is Egyptian. Apparently, your ethnicity is unrelated to, to, to your commitment to human rights and free speech. But um, what we've witnessed is that when you crack down on peaceful protesters protesting a genocide, when you send in the New York police, infamous for its brutality, uh, to crack down on college students protesting a genocide, what you get is more protests, not less protests. And that's exactly what we know to be true from every protest movement in the world. When you crack down and use violence against peaceful protesters, all you're doing is emboldening them. All you're doing is driving more students on more college campuses to protest, which is what we've seen over the past week or two. You now have protest encampments on dozens and dozens of college campuses uh, uh, across the United States, a, a, as well as in, in places like the UK, Australia, and France. And I think the reasons are obvious. College students are sick and tired of seeing their universities being complicit in the genocide of the Palestinian people. Every single college campus, every single university in the United States has an endowment. Those endowments are intended uh, to support student life, campus life, education. If those endowments are supposed to be all about supporting education, free speech, of the values embodied by universities, well, then how is it that they're invested in these companies that are profiting off Israeli apartheid occupation and now genocide? And so I think students are rightfully rejecting that. And they're saying, we are not willing for our university uh, uh, to be complicit in this genocide. And so they're rightfully protesting 
peacefully, overwhelmingly peacefully. Every single protest encampment is peaceful as far as I can tell. There have been zero acts of violence. In fact, the violence is being committed against the peaceful protesters, as we've seen at Emory in Georgia, as we've seen at Columbia and NYU and Yale. You have police coming in violently, removing people from their places of encampment. Um, and so you're just seeing the protests spread. Now you're seeing as a result of these protest movements, uh, you're seeing campuses shut down classes. I believe that is what has happened at Columbia, where they're shutting down in-person instruction. Um, so this is having a real impact, and it's incredibly inspiring. And when I was a college student from 2003 to 2007, the University of Michigan student body voted overwhelmingly against a resolution to call on the university to divest from companies profiting off Israel's uh, occupation. Here we are 22 years later, the overwhelming majority of student bodies are passing resolutions calling on their uh, uh, university administrations to divest from companies profiting off Israeli occupation and Israeli apartheid and now Israeli genocide. We're talking about Lockheed Martin, Hewlett Packard, tons and tons of companies that uh, universities are invested in are profiting off Israel's occupation and genocide. And that's totally unacceptable. And it's now incredibly inspiring to see these students speaking up. The Turkish people, I think on average, have been some of the, the most, the strongest supporters of the Palestinian people uh, for decades. You recall uh, back in 2010-11, the Mavi Marmara incident, where the Turks were some of the first people to reject Israel's blockade of the Gaza Strip and, and, and try to deliver humanitarian aid to people uh, being punished for having committed the crime of being born a Palestinian in Gaza. So I think the Turkish people, of all people, understand uh, what is happening in Palestine and understand the need to reject Israeli violence and to try and break the siege through action. And so I think the Turkish people have led the, those efforts in the past. And I would just call on the Turkish people once again to raise up their voices and speak out against what is happening. Because this is, like I said, the most dramatic escalation in violence we've seen in Israel-Palestine to date, in the entire history of the Israel-Palestine question. I would just call on the Turkish people to continue those advocacy efforts, to send more humanitarian convoys, to try and break the siege on Gaza once again. That is what we need right now.